How does it work with someone like Clint Eastwood, someone who's just such a wonderful film director, your knowledge of film studies, your mm. love of film, and understanding the complexity, but at the same time the textual requirements of making good films? Well, we, we hooked up at the Monterey Jazz Festival. He asked me to play because he's on the board of Monterey in California. Monterey in California. He's, he, 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 he has a house there, and he runs this Monterey Jazz Festival, and he, he asked me to come and play. And I wasn't really doing live shows at the time, but uh, I was you know, trying to work on my album, but I thought, you can't turn down Clint Eastwood. <laughs> so, uh, better not. I got to Monterey, and uh, we had a chat, and he, he gave me the script for uh, Gran Torino, uh, which he was just about to start shooting. And he said, you know, I'd, I'd love you to write a song. He didn't say it like that, though, did he? No, <laughs> no he, kind of, he kind of threw a script at me and said, check this out, see if you like it, and I'll send you the tune I've got in mind. And... Uh, you know, I want you to write, I want you to, what do you, what do you like as a lyricist, he asked me. And I said, well, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty good. You know, I love writing lyrics and uh, uh, let me read the script and I'll get back to you. So um, he sent me a tape of, of this, which was his idea for the score. Li so just explain to those that are in the mm. audience that didn't see the movie mm. what, the, what the basic uh, setup of the movie is. Well, I read the script and um, uh, it's basically, the main, the main character is, is played by Clint Eastwood, he's, he's called Walt Kowalski, and he is basically uh, a, a racist who lives in uh, a, a, a very dilapidated part of Detroit for the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, he fought in the Korean War. Um, he hates the way his, his neighborhood has been populated by uh, foreigners. Um, his wife dies at the beginning of the film, and he is faced with living in this neighborhood full of people he hates. Um, it's the Hmong. The Hmong people, yeah. It's although he gets told of for calling them Hmong, they're called Hmong people. Right. So, um, meaning displaced uh, Koreans from the, uh, from the Korean War. Um, and so, it, throughout the film, he, he uh, begins to form a relationship with these people, and that's the basis of the film. And uh, I read the script, and I thought, it was, I thought it was amazing, actually. I thought it was a very ballsy thing for a man of 78 years old to do. Because it's, you know, in some ways it's incredibly politically incorrect. Um, it's a real film for our times, you know, for a, a modern look at how we feel about, you know, um, people from other countries living in, in our countries. It was, it was fascinating. And uh, so he asked me to write a song. He said, just come up with some lyrics. Here's the tune. And this is what he sent me on, on tape. It was just literally this. That's what he sent me. That's what you had to work with. Yeah, that was the that was the that was the um, I guess the basis for the score, you know. And he said, "Can you write a song based around that and write lyrics?" So I got to work on it, and um, he said, all, "All I want is to make sure that it's not too dark, uh, and it has the words Gran Torino in it." And Gran Torino does not rhyme with a lot of great things. <laughs> Filipino, casino, <laughs> it's, it ain't easy. So I wrote this song, and I sent it to him, and he loved it. So play us the song, and okay. or what you, can, what you ultimately constructed. Sure. stars above my head the warning signs travel far I drink instead on my own oh how I've known the battle scars and worn out beds gentle now a tender breeze blows whispers through a grand Torino whistling another tired song Engines hum and bitter dreams grow A heart locked in a grand Torino It beats a lonely rhythm all night long These streets of old, they shine with the things I've known 
and breaks through the trees they're sparkling the world is nothing more than all the tiny things you've left behind so tenderly your story is nothing more than what you say what you've done will become standing strong do you belong in your skin just wondering gentle now a tender breeze blows whispers through the grand serene whistling another tired song Engines hum and bitter dreams grow A heart locked in a grand Torino It beats a lonely rhythm all night long May I be so bold and still need someone to hold That shudders my skin They're sparkling your world is nothing more than all the tiny things you've left behind So realign all the stars above my head The warning signs travel far Drink instead on my own Oh, how I've known the battle scars and worn out beds Gentle now a tender breeze blows Whispers through the Gran Torino Beats a lonely rhythm all night long it Beats a lonely rhythm all night long Beats a lonely rhythm all night long. Thank you so much. Thank you. Jamie, what's so interesting is to see how you're given a tiny little thread by someone like Clint Eastwood and then taking that, shaping it, writing it, writing the lyric for it, getting the texture right, making sure it fits to picture. When you eventually played that to Clint Eastwood, and I mean, obviously it found its way into the movie as the end title theme, but what was his reaction when you actually played it to him? How did he, how did he respond? Yeah, he's, um, you know, he is a very laid back character, but you can really tell when he likes something, you know? And he just said, it's perfect. It's you know? perfect. It's perfect. perfect. And uh, the difference this time was that uh, I'd recorded it in my studio again, and he, he didn't say, we'll use that version, because he needed it to fit to the end titles, uh, to the way the editing happens in the last uh, title. Because it's such a dramatic, secret, mm. dramatic end to that movie, just yeah. such an incredible movie. So I ended up going to his house in Bel Air and recording it on the piano in his front room to picture, to a TV in his oh, front room. Oh, amazing. With him sitting next <laughs> to me like that. And... Um, I played Just it pull once. up that slide again, please. Uh, I played it once, and he, uh, he said, uh, that was great, Jamie said, but can you play it like you're in a nightclub, and there's only two people left in the room, and one of them's a hot broad, like that. <laughs> and I said, yeah, sure, Clint, like that. And um, I recorded it, and in about an hour, we were done, and we drank beer on his front porch. What a fantastic story. Yeah, it was... It was as the Queen would say, magical. So is that magical? <laughs> yeah, but it really was. She got it right back then. 